I keep wondering when that fascist MAGA captured Supreme Court is supposed to appear. Over the course of just a few days, we went from the squishy conservatives joining their liberal colleagues in order to allow the Biden administration to keep censoring our speech online to now having Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson side with some of her conservative colleagues in ruling in favor of a J6 defendant. Isn't that what all the fake hoaxes and attacks against Justices Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito were supposed to do? Scare them away from ruling favorably in J6 or Trump-related cases? Turns out the left should have spent less time attacking Thomas and Alito and instead put their pressure on one of their own darlings. Obviously, that's not the way the court is supposed to work. Technically, it's illegal to use such bully tactics to sway the justices, but that's where we are right now at the left. So what happened today in the Fisher ruling is that the nation's highest court found that former police officer Joseph Fisher of Pennsylvania was incorrectly charged by Biden's DOJ with obstruction of an official proceeding. A felony charge applied to over 350 such J6 defendants, and it comes with a sentence of up to 20 years behind bars. It's a charge which caused Matthew Perna to take his own life when it was tacked onto his case. This charge also makes up two of the four charges facing President Trump from special counsel Jack Smith. So in his majority opinion, Chief Justice John Roberts argued that, quote, to prove a violation of Section 1512C2, the government must establish that the defendant impaired the availability or integrity for use in an official proceeding of records, documents, objects, end quote. Fisher instead only entered the Capitol an hour after Congress had already gone into recess and he left just four minutes later obstructing nothing and destroying no records or documents by doing so. That same dynamic applies to many of the other J6 defendants wrongfully charged, arrested, kept locked up and sentenced for this felony. Federal courthouses in D.C. are said to be bracing for a slew of appeals based off the Supreme Court ruling. Now, in another important ruling today, the court said it is not cruel and unusual punishment for cities to ban camping on public streets, meaning the hobos do not have a right to shoot up heroin inside their tents, outside schools or shopping centers. Telling them to leave is no violation of their Eighth Amendment rights. And last but not least is this other big ruling I want to get to tonight, which has to do with striking a blow to the massive administrative state that we have. The justices overturned the Chevron doc doctrine in a vote of six to three. Joining us now to discuss is Tyler O'Neill, the managing editor of the Daily Signal. Tyler, thanks for being back tonight. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Great. So first, before we get into the ruling on Loper Bright Enterprises versus Raimondo, what is, or I guess I should say, was the Chevron doctrine? Yeah, so it's called Chevron deference, and it tr traces back to a case involving Chevron, fittingly enough. Uh, where essentially what Chevron deference is, is it says that courts should defer to the way that the administrative state applies the law. So when there's a question, when there's ambiguity in a statute passed by Congress, the agencies are supposed to take their own steps to clarify things, and then the courts can't second guess them. And essentially what the Supreme Court said today, which, I mean, it doesn't sound like it's that big of a thing when you just describe it, but in reality, this is going to have massive reverberations across the administrative state, because what it means is that the administrative state cannot any longer assume that it won't be checked by the courts. And this is, this is humongous because unfortunately, the way that our administrative state works today Congress will pass a law. They pass this extremely vague law that says, we want clean air. You, EPA, you make it so that we can have clean air. And then that's all they do. And so the EPA suddenly has this huge amount of power. The EPA can create all sorts of rules. And when those rules are too tough on the American people, what happens is an American will complain and they'll go to Congress and they'll say, hey, my legislator, can you intervene on my behalf? The legislator goes to the EPA and says, if you don't change this rule, then we're going to cut your funding. And so the EPA says, oh, I'm sorry, we'll let it go for this one person, but the rule is going to stay. And so everybody wins. And it's this really bizarre, you know, corrupt system, frankly.